So now let's get into these methodologies that we're going to use to examine policies and programs and choose between uh, different solutions um, and evaluate how programs perform. Uh, so we'll just kind of get started by identifying these two methodologies and some of the basic principles involved. So what is policy analysis? Uh, so I mentioned to you already that the policy process uh, starts with problem definition and agenda setting, and then policy formulation. For us, uh, for public administrators who aren't elected officials, uh, our work in policy analysis is really going to inform these first two steps of identifying a problem and really understanding everything about it that we can, um, and coming up with policy solutions that can be enacted by our legislators. So another great definition from a textbook, um, policy analysis usually involves collecting and interpreting information that clarifies the causes and effects of public problems and the likely consequences of using one policy option or another to address them. So some key points in this definition that I wanna highlight. Um, it means collecting and interpreting information. So this isn't just off the cuff, this isn't our knee jerk reactions, but it does rely on data clarifying the causes and effects of public problems. Uh, to be able to accurately come up with solutions to those public problems, we really need to understand how they work. We need to understand what's causing those problems and the impacts of those problems uh, if we're going to properly solve them uh, and the likely consequences of using one policy option or another. So I wanna focus first on the likely consequences. Uh, for policy analysis, what we're trying to do is come up with solutions. So we have to predict the future. We are going to be proposing a policy solution or a fix to the problem uh, that hasn't been done yet, um, or at least hasn't been done yet in our context. Um, so we have to project the likely consequences uh, of choosing one policy option or another. So we are going to examine a few different policy options for every problem that we're trying to solve because we're trying to choose the best one. So in short, policy analysis answers questions of what should we do? Um, what should we do about a specific problem that, that is impacting the world? Um, and it does so systematically using a logical framework populated by data. Now, I just told you that we have to predict the future. Um, and we're talking about policy options that we haven't tried yet. That doesn't mean someone hasn't tried them. And so often what we do in policy analysis is look at comparisons. Uh, we look at what's been tried in similar places with similar problems, and we make uh, educated um, projections of what those policy solutions would do in our location and our context based on data from those comparable places. We, we look at trends. Uh, and we examine what would happen with those trends if uh, one policy or another were implemented. Policy analysis has many methodologies, many super complex approaches. Um, and in this class, we've boiled that all down to the kind of simplest, most common components of most of those methods. Um, so when I say policy analysis as a methodology, it's we're, we're looking at the, the kind of most basic form of it. In your careers, you can expect to interact with many much more complicated versions of policy analysis, but at the very least at this stage, you're going to have the basics. So I want to take a brief caveat and talk here about objectivity and subjectivity. Um, and these are kind of competing forces in our analysis. Um, so first off, the idea of objectivity. Uh, we are scientists and our analysis uh, should be objective. Um, our personal feelings and preferences have nothing to do with the outcomes of our research. Um, we may very strongly feel that one solution or another is the right one, but our feelings have nothing to do with it. We do have to make our recommendations based on data. Subjectivity is questions of what, what should be, right? What ought to be. Um, and I would argue and I would suggest that the act of identifying a problem and calling it a problem uh, is inherently subjective. And so, so while we aim for objectivity in our, our the conduct of our research, uh, we do have to admit that the, the pursuit itself is subjective. 
And this is the policy analysis process as we are going to go through it in this course. We're going to start by defining the problem. We really have to understand what the problem is before we try to solve it. Uh, we're going to establish a policy objective. And I'm not going to say goal because an objective is a much more uh, specific term uh, that highlights the actual achievements that we're going to uh, pursue. Uh, we're going to identify some potential solutions to the problems that we've identified. Uh, we're going to establish the evaluative criteria. These are the uh, characteristics of policies uh, and solutions that we find to be the most important um, when considering one alternative versus another. Uh, developing the analysis plan is basically laying out our methods. Um, and performing the analysis means subjecting our, our different policy options to the different evaluative criteria. Uh, once we perform the analysis, we will draw some conclusions. We'll say this policy seems to perform better than this one, um, and then we'll make a recommendation. Therefore, I recommend uh, one policy over another. Shifting gears a little bit into program evaluation. Uh, this is really going to occur at the evaluation stage of the policy process. Um, remember that that programs are often implemented as part of a policy solution. They are something that has been set up um, to solve some kind of problem. And so when we evaluate them, we are engaging at this stage of the policy process. Um, another great textbook definition here, uh, program evaluation is the application of systematic methods to address questions about program operations and results. It may include ongoing monitoring of a program as well as one-shot studies of program processes and program impact. The approaches used are based on social science research methodologies and professional standards. So a lot here to unpack, right? Uh, program evaluation is systematic, right? It, it is not something, again, that we do kind of uh, off the cuff, but we do set spend a lot of time setting up our analysis. Um, it could be something that goes on over the course of time. It could be an evaluation that we conduct every year of a program uh, or a one shot study. We're just going to step in and look at a program, uh, check out its performance and then step back out. Um, the approaches are based on social science research so that that research methods course we took MPA 504 is going to be really important here. Um, and, and professional standards, uh, remembering that, that in public administration, we have a responsibility uh, to the public uh, to, to, account, to be accountable. Um, and so, you know, that notion of accountability is very important to us uh, in, in program evaluation. Uh, remembering the definition of program, a set of resources and activities directed toward one or more common goals. Um, so what we do is we assess the performance of, of those resources and activities um, that have usually been implemented as a result of government policy or a nonprofit initiative. Government agencies and nonprofits may both be the ones to implement programs. And so, you know, we have to be able to work in multiple settings. Just like policy analysis, it is systematic. It has a logical framework and it is populated by data. Uh, fortunately for program evaluation, the data that we are using exists, right? It's not something we have to project or predict um, because we're evaluating something that does actually currently exist in the world. Um, and just like in policy analysis, in this course, we're really getting into the most kind of basic common components of program evaluation as a methodology. There are very specific methods that can be used for program, program evaluation, and you will run into those during your career. Um, but for now, we are going to just very much focus on the basic elements of both of these methodologies. So remembering that most of our work is funded by public or philanthropic dollars, uh, we do have to remember that we have a responsibility and accountability to those funders. Um, not only that, if we're doing anything that involves the public, we have a responsibility of accountability to the citizens. Um, and sometimes we have to report through oversight agencies who, who really serve as the watchdog uh, of us, right, on behalf of citizens. Um, and doing our, our work, our program evaluation, allows those funders, the oversight agencies, and therefore citizens to see how programs are performing 
uh, and make decisions about continued funding, governance, decision making, and implementation of those programs that we're evaluating. So it's a very serious business um, and really uh, requires us to be very diligent about our work. Program evaluation process. Uh, I've, I've gotten rid of one element of this because we are not going to be examining multiple evaluation designs. We're really just going to be focusing on the key components. So in most evaluations, right, you would be selecting a design. For our purposes, we're just going to focus on those basic elements. So the basic elements for us are one, identifying the program, really really understanding the history and the inner workings of that program so we we know how to examine it properly. Uh, determining the evaluation objectives. What is it we want this evaluation to do? What do we want it to tell us? Um, and determining evaluation questions. Uh, what do we need to know to be able to meet those objectives? Um, and then we plan the connect collection and analysis of our data. Um, without being very careful about the collection and analysis, um, again, it could just be chaos um, and we won't learn anything important and it won't be systematic. Um, we will establish the logistics of our evaluation, right? Making very uh, clear decisions about what those um, results are going to mean before we get them. Uh, then we get results, right? We get the results and figure out which categories or, or which, uh, which ranges they fall into. Um, we answer those evaluation questions and then report our overall findings. So you will see that we kind of start very broad and then we narrow in till we find uh, key data points that tell us the answers to our problems. And then we zoom back out and we get we get we broad again in our, our research, um, identifying what those key data points mean for the big picture. So that was uh, just a brief run through these two methodologies. Um, we'll get much more detailed on both of them throughout this course.